We sit here warm, clothed, and fed. But oh, think about it for a moment. Down into the 30 degrees. In the darkness. Shivering. Caught it. 
could not face the wind. We gave way to it and were driven along. Running under the lee of a small island called Kaada, we managed with difficulty to secure the ship's boat. After hoisting it up, they used supports to undergird the ship. And fearing that we might run aground, they lowered the gear, they were driven along. Since we were violently storm-tossed, they began the next day to jettison the cargo. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. Neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest lay on us. All hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. Sounds like today driven along by the storms of life, being blown about by forces that is beyond us, that we have no control over. You do all that you can. Make the best decisions that you can. Throw the cargo overboard, jettison the tackle, and yet still seems to be so hopeless. Then the Apostle Paul stands up in the midst of this storm and in this rocking, rollicking boat. This is what the Apostle Paul says. Now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of the God whom I belong to and whom I worship. And he, the angel of God, said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it shall be exactly as I have been told. In verse 29, our text, and fearing that we might run upon the rocks, they let down four anchors from the stern and prayed. For day to come. They let down four anchors and prayed for daylight. In the midst of whatever storm you're going through, whether it be in your marriage, your home, your work, your career, your church, your spiritual life, your work life, whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, that's bigger than you, that you cannot yourself control. You're driven in this storm. Let down four anchors and pray for daylight. And I believe daylight will come. What are these four anchors? I've named the first of those anchors promise. The Apostle Paul had great faith, but was not a blind faith. The Apostle Paul had been through so much. Real faith is realistic faith. Real faith does not deny that you're having troubles, problems, difficulties. Real faith does not deny that you're in the midst of a storm. It's realistic. Listen to what Paul went through. In 2 Corinthians 11, he writes, Five times I received at the hands of the Jews forty lashes, less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift in the sea. 
on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my own people, dangers from Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, and toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, hunger and thirst, often without food in cold and exposure. And apart from all these other things, there is daily pressure on me about my anxiety for the churches. Paul had gone about establishing churches throughout the Roman Empire. And he cared about them, and he was concerned about them. And along with that heavy-hearted concern was all this physical stuff that he was going through. The storms that he endured. He had a faith in God, but he also knew that he would go through these things. When you have faith in God, you do not deny the problems that you have. You do not pretend that everything is la-di-da and beautiful and just nice, smooth sailing. No, you realize, even with your faith in God, that he will allow you, permit you, even send you sometimes through the storms of life. So if you have an anchor, let it be his promise. Because his promise is that God will be with you through all of this. The anchor of his presence. Do you know that God is going through this with you? Did God go through all of this with that mother whose two little children, two years old and four years old, was ripped from her arms by the flood and lost their lives. Was God with her through all of that? Yes. God is with you in no matter what you're going through. That's an anchor that in the midst of a howling storm is a whisper. A whisper. A whisper. I am with you. I am with you. Jesus gives us the whisper. When he says in John 14, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. When he says in John 16, I have said these words to you, followers of mine, that you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world, said Jesus. What he is giving to us is a threefold promise of truth. I won't leave you alone. No matter what you go through, you're not alone. He goes through it with you. He has suffered everything you can suffer. He has taken it upon himself. He knows he is with you. And secondly, you will have tribulation, trouble, problems, difficulties, persecution. You will have storms. He promises it. But he says, look at here. I have overcome it all. And if Christ has overcome it, and we are in Christ, in the palm of his hand, we too can overcome all of it, no matter how bad it may appear. The anchor of his promise that he won't leave us. The anchor of his presence that he who has victory will give victory. And the promise of a purpose in his life. The anchor of a purpose. When you're in the midst and of a swirl of activity, when you are just overwhelmed with the terribleness of the storm, realize that God has a purpose of every bit of this. <laughs> Paul believed and knew that God was in control of his life. When Paul was first saved, when he first came to know Jesus, did you know he was blinded? Blinded for three days. On day one, he didn't know if it would end. On day two, he didn't know if he would ever see again. 
On the morning of day three, he still had no clue as to whether he'd ever see light again. Complete blackness. Oh, he must have felt so forsaken and so alone in Damascus, waiting for something from God. But God had a reason for that. God had a reason for him to go through that. And then God said, he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him, Paul, how much he will suffer for my name. God is saying all of the suffering that my servant Paul is going through is for a purpose, there's a goal, there's a plan, and I am in charge, I am sovereign, and I will bring him through. So he could stand up in that boat just some years later and say, I believe God. I know God is real. He has spoken to me. He has a plan for me. And I know that no matter how black or dark or difficult it might look right now, I know God will accomplish his will in my life. He has a will for yours. He has a reason for you. He has brought you into a saving knowledge of Christ for a reason. He's brought you to this family of God for a reason. He is going to accomplish his will in your life no matter what the news says, no matter what the storms may come, no matter how helpless you are. Remember that God has you for a reason and he will have his way. Paul had a no-so experience with God. Not a maybe so, not a might so, not a hope so, but he said, I know that God has reason for me, and I know that God is with me, and I know that no matter what, I have the guarantee of the words of God. Amen? They put out their anchors. Promise. Presence of God. The purpose of God. And a positive attitude. Go into this week. Go into this year with that positive attitude that no matter how bad it looks, no matter how difficult, no matter what outcomes may come, you know that God is in control and he will use you in a beautiful and wonderful way. And he's not true with you. He's not true with us. He's not true with this country. He's not true with this world. God loves us. He loves you. He will take care of us. So have that positive attitude of knowing that whether you get your way or not, whether it looks good or bad for you, trust him, believe in him. He's in control and he will work. Uh, put the anchors down, but remember those anchors have a chain, a chain of prayer. Oh, it was asked this morning to pray for our country. It has been asked by 70 million people up in the Northeast to pray for them. Yes, we pray, knowing that that prayer will be answered and daylight will come, a morning will come. Yes, we have a beautiful future. We have something to look forward to. Life is never so gloomy, never so dark, never so dangerous. Life is never so scary. Oh no, it's never such that. When God is in your life, in your heart, in your faith, in your belief. Let down your anchors in the storm and pray. 